Hello everyone and welcome to the January Break the Game 2v2 show match. I'm your host Dominic or Shadowfear, whichever you prefer, alongside ZK. How's it going ZK? Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. I hope everyone had happy holidays. We sure had a blast uh, with, with our little break from Immortal, but games have mm -hmm. still been played. The meta has been evolving, so... That was a new patch actually. We never got to see that on stream yet. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, I thought yep. we had to be on patch. Okay, that's going to be I, interesting. If we saw it was maybe, maybe a bit the last tournament, but I, I recall that patch actually came after the last tournament. Wow. Okay, so new patch. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we've got something to talk about then. <laughs> Let's talk about the new patch a bit, huh? Well, we... it's mainly just some small changes to Immortals and a big change to tech structure. Yeah. So you'll see both players... Well, let me see this new tech building that'll show up for both Aru and Karath. The Aru side, it unlocks Ikor, so you can get those a bit earlier, and the Karath side, it unlocks Zephyrs, but it's also, like, part of their tech chain. So, it's going to be a little longer for the Karath players, if there are any, to get up to the higher tech. And that's generally the case. The main change is that players are going to be playing in the lower tech game much longer than they were in the previous iterations of this game. Yeah, exactly. The goal of the developers of this patch was really to extend the early game and the mid game. So developers thought we were getting a bit too fast. The thrones getting those high, high, high tech units a bit too fast for the liking. So <laughs> like six minutes a, in, it's a little, yeah, little exactly. fast. Yeah. Yeah. So we're like, oh, you know what? Let's just add more tech structures and you're just going to be more vulnerable to those tech timings if you try to tech up that fast. So those are the changes they've put in. And today we'll get to see how it's shaped up. How have uh, some yeah, of these two 2v2 especially. Yeah, because exactly. 2v2 we just has always had a bit of a weird pacing. Like it tends to be a bit faster. Yeah, now a lot more units, a lot more units can do 2v1 attacks and mm -hmm. about the, getting that right position for, for those big pushes. It's going to be an exciting match to see how this show match shapes up. Of course, our players mm -hmm. are going to be uh, the Santa team with uh, Magico and Santa Claus. Uh, yep. I don't have control. Uh, with Magico and Santa Claus. Okay, one sec. Yeah, Magico and Santa Claus are going to... Yeah. And against Voyeur and who has kindly showed up to help out here. Yeah, exactly. Will be yeah. will be totally not a voyeur. Yeah, not a voyeur, uh, who just kindly showed st stepped up for us. Playing with his ally YJ Zoo. So both of them decent players have played quite a bit. Of course, the favorites here are without a doubt Magico and Santa, both players that uh, have won the last 2v2 tournament by themselves the last uh, big alpha tournament so they're definitely the favorites here for this turn for this show match i'm actually really curious what's going to be happening for their opening I and mean, going for early expansion which is kind of normal what they do beyond that is remains to be seen but lost province players will typically go for early expansion because it's so safe this yeah. is not at all surprising we're going to be in for a bit of a longer game today it's yeah. Yeah, that definitely yeah. makes sense, right? With that choke point at the front here, it's much easier to just defend uh, any type of early game pushes. Of course, something we have seen in those 1v1 games is how powerful the Zakal and the Zephyrus have gotten in this patch, both of them getting a slight buff as well. So you can get make them a bit more securely and they're useful in all stages of the game. Another fun little change is the Teapot get an attack for other Teapots. So the Scouts uh, have a bit of an oh, early yes. game fight if they decide to go for it. Uh, but at this point, it's just Santa and, Ma and Magico ready to go 2v1 against any teapot, and nah, they don't need to. They're just running around trying to scout everything. But it doesn't mean your, your scouting game has to be a little more active. Let's not just throw the scout in there and hope for the best. So, like, you actually have to you have to be careful to be keeping an eye on them. Yeah, exactly. He almost and lost them here. Oof. And so far, they actually haven't seen what Voyeur and Zell are up to. Nothing super aggressive, but Magical and Santa don't know. Yeah, well, uh, at this point, as long as Magical Santa saw the expand, you know it wasn't some super early pressure. Don't have to worry quite as much. Uh, and yeah, this is really going to be the state of this early game. Both of them heading for repair camp, figuring out exactly what type of tech they want to, want to head towards. As uh, not much going up. Yeah, as we see, there's really the, that that shift in tech we we're talking about earlier in the patch timings. It's. It is significant, and the players are absolutely having to just go for more early game. And they're all heading only for their tier 1 units. The very first units, Bone Stalkers and, uh, and Zentari just get, have an added trying to get that first power cap, which seems to go to blue and an early pyre lead for Ice Team. 
Yeah, and that's turning into an early unit lead as well as Fire is just running everything into this army that they really cannot beat. Yeah, Zakals are, Zakals are finally out uh, for Not of War. We'll help with that early defense, any type of push he decides to go for. But really, what do these players want? What are they heading for? It remains to be seen what their tech follow-up will, will be with the Godheart out for Not of Warrior. Yeah, that's clearly not their... I mean, the current priority is just make sure they have an army to survive anything that comes at them. Magical and Santa... We're a little more aggressive at the beginning, have built up a bit more of a scary army to actually deal with. Any, like, timing pushes are very possible. I know Magical's been practicing them a fair bit, and I can't imagine Santa has been letting those alone either. Yeah, it's really been Magical style, right? Get that big timing attack, know exactly how much a player can push at to optimize those pushes, and just head for her opponent's head. Of course, this is a very defensive uh, play from Zo and not a voice. So really... Well, I mean, the Zakals are good in any stage, in any of the early stages, either for defense or for a timing attack. We'll see how they decide to go at it. Santa and Magical Swords are very spread out, heading for all the pirate camps, uh, which can give a clear opening for Not a Voyeur if he decides to pounce on anything. At this point, Fire Team, they have a setup where they don't have to have to worry about getting push for attack timing. Like I said, it's a bit more defensive. Certainly, it's going to be harder to get through their army if they're trying to like hang back hold the line then if they went for a fast tech the magical and santa they're trying to figure something out they are going to be having to deal with icors we do have the murder hollow come up that is the new icor building that is the thing i was talking about before why is out deciding to at least have that option available to deal with mass bone stalkers actually mass light mass units in general they're not quite as good as they used to be against light units so don't think why is just going to be able to murder everything with Icors? But it could still help. Man, he likes murdering stuff with anything. He doesn't have to murder with Icors. True. Of course, he can murder her with, uh, with the calls. But this is a full surround from Team Ice, which might make it a bit harder. Oof. No. Oh, that army's completely wiped out. Magical and Santa pushing everything into this third Voyeur has decided to build up, possibly prematurely. Dropping the Red Harvest to hopefully get team ice away voyeur is able to hold the line we do see the art update right here the oh that's right incubator yeah. our new our new spider uh, crab coming around <laughs> yes it has finally got animated legs <laughs> we've all been waiting for the animated legs yeah the spider crab very powerful with uh not sure what it has on it on its back here some type of Egg? I think that's where, yeah, I'm guessing that's like a birthing pot of some kind. Like mm. where the actual incubators are, or a blood sack or something that turns into that. I don't actually know. But what uh, I do know man. is that Team Fire, while able to expand a little bit, Team Ice is, they've already got their thirds going. The, the map control is just slowly but surely grinding out into a significant economic lead. Yeah, that's what they're... I mean, that's often the pace of this map, right? You just get an economic lead, and as it's pretty easy to defend with the towers in the middle of the of the path, you're able to get that early lead, and those frumps come in from not avoid to try and distract his opponent out of position. But at least, you know, that's always something that gives you map control, which is something you always want. Forcing your opponent to Certainly, defend against... Yeah. Only Team Fire right? needs it. Team Fire absolutely needs it. Like, they cannot... They, I mean, they really can't do a whole lot of damage in general, but they absolutely can't afford to let their opponents just run roughshod. Yeah, those problems doing a little bit of a, a bit of harassment, and they stay alive for now. Turn into. I mean, it's it's worked as a distraction. Like, why just has been able to get the northeast base, going for a fourth as well. Like, they're going, for, they're double expanding off of the back of this, which is risky, but. If that distraction holds, I mean, it's on the side of the map that that Team Ice is not going to easily be able to check out. Yeah, that's something I've always liked about these players. That sometimes you feel a bit behind. You're like, okay, let's take a risk. Let's double expand. And if that risk pays off, you'll be able to get a really large army at, at a later tech timing instead of uh, just surviving. But now it comes down to will their opponent attack? These opponents are happy just staying back and building, building static defense on top of the on top of the ramps. They are, again, not really... Well, I should, I should say, they are They are kind of falling behind now. Because, like I said, economically speaking, Team Fire does have a slight advantage. 
It certainly matters. will going forward. Big fight coming through here. Magical able to push a little bit, but even with the Zol drop, it's not quite enough. Turret is up, but Santa Claus forces cannot take advantage of it. Magical unable to do a whole lot of damage, and Voyeur and Zoe going for the counterattack. We're running right into the static defense. Team Fire looking to regroup. Up with those under spines on top. Oh, they're going for the Acalyx. Magical heading up for the Acalyx. <laughs> oh. Units we never see, but here we go. The long ranges lodgers. Invisible on top of it, man. It's uh let's see if you can make it work. <laughs> well, they see why that was out of position. Can try to split the army up and Zhao looking to regroup with Voyeur. Magical blocking off Voyeur. Zhao blocked off by Santa. But magical. But the Blood Plague, making sure Voyeur cannot trivially go across to help their teammate. Oh, and at this point, Zhao's going to lose all his Zakals to all those Zentari. He, Voyeur tries to come in for, for the flank and help out his ally, but Magical's just boxing him out here. Perfect play. And those Akalos just mean, oh, you can't really jump on top of it or else the explosion really gets you good. That's given Magical tons more map control. At this point, it's... Fine for Deets Nuts. They're not out of they're not out of the they're out not out of the woods, but they're not doing terrible. Magical and Santa have managed to expand behind this, giving them that much more of an advantage. So it's still a slight advantage for Team Fire timing wise. Can they turn it into a tech advantage? If they can, <laughs> then there's a chance. Yeah, it always comes down to that, right? Sometimes you get the economic lead, sometimes you get the tech lead. We just gotta get a lead of somehow because at this point. The Walter team just has a full-on army lead, and that's the that's the lead you want the most of, most often because it gives you map control, it gives you more bases on the map, it gives you opportunities you just can't get without that large army. Magical definitely knows that and absolutely taking full advantage. This is a bit of an uphill struggle for Team Fire as a result. Zoe as well Wait. deciding. Akalic's are the way to go, so we're just going to Akalic Mirror, but Akalic on its own versus Akalic into a bunch of static defense built a... Sheesh, that is a lot of static defense being built at once. That's what's just going for it. Yeah, it really Santa Claus getting before. caught out, though. We're looking to surround Zeno with Akalic's providing a little bit of defense. Ooh. I love these left from Magico getting out of that blast. Well, they get out of that blast, but is there... Is their setup out of the woods? I mean, Santa is out of position. I don't, at this point, it doesn't matter all that much because they have map control on the whole west side. If they can secure that, which they have at this point, Santa just wants to box him in even more of the fire singer in the full static defense position. Uh, why does that not have worked? Could try to break it right now, but it's dangerous as Magical can always jump on him from behind and jump on him with Ada Calyx. My god, Magical, oh. you do not stop. Mm -hmm. I have a bad feeling about this. Yep. Shoot. You know, it's a tech right. lead we're talking about. A small little tech lead. <laughs> yeah, but I meant more of the games. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's probably worse. Tech lead and tech issues, unfortunately. No, I'll start that out. Which I'm not sure who is going to be considered the winner, because that seems like Magical and Santa with an advantage, but... I don't know. Yeah, yeah Magical and Santa definitely have a smart lead. Are their opponents dead in the water? Not quite yet. Maybe in the next minute they would have been with those ten Akalis just pushing down on them. But this is a... Uh, it's uncertain, right? It's a complex strategy it game. Is. Anything can happen with, a, with any movement. Alright. And... Uh, well, whatever. either way, we're going to have to just... Give it a sec to figure out what to do. Yeah, well, this being a show match. Well, we'll see how the players decide. But they might just say, yeah, let's redo a match. We don't have that many games to do today, so... We can get yeah, another out of it. True. We can just get another one out of it. Get uh, another opportunity for for this nuts to uh, get out of the woods and get out their strategies. Maybe get their economy getting a bit better. Get those first fights a bit stronger. And then Magical wouldn't be able to get that strong of a lead in the early game. Yeah, I don't know. It's the expansion on the side that are making me think that it's not really over. Yeah. Well, like economy-wise, it was pretty close. But then army-wise... Army wise, just Magical had a huge lead, and that's a uh, that's just enough for his team to get on with it. So yeah, okay, yeah. they're calling a redo, so we'll do a redo. Yep, 
and we lost Magico for now, but Magico will be right back, and yeah, we're we're ready to get started again on this uh, on this fight. Another game on Lost Province. Lost Province being our first map, a province that just uh, that is just uh, no one can hold on to it. No one yep. can keep it. It's constantly no. lost. You know, maybe one day we'll be found province, but until then, it just has to keep getting lost and just fighting on top of it, hoping that something will happen, but it doesn't look good so far. It's a technical loss on the technical yeah, yeah. side. No one's able to find their way to victory. But yeah, everyone's just kind of happy to play more games. Yeah, Which, exactly. again, they should be. This is the, the show match. This is it. This is just the one series. And we're not having... Last tournament was what, like a six at our tournament? That yeah, oh, that was a lot. Oh yeah, it was a it was a really good tournament. It was a great turnout. It just took a while. Yeah, well, to be, that was a lot of Orzum versus Orzum, or lots of games that lasted thirty minutes to forty minutes instead of you know often our games aren't quite as long. They stay about six to twelve. Like twelve minutes is maybe average game length. Uh, sometimes players are able to end it in six or magical at the very least has his timing mm -hmm. attacks that. Kills opponents immediately, but most of the players have some trouble uh, getting it over with that quickly. Especially nowadays, because you don't have like it's hard to know that you can just push with tech. As I've been finding anyway, it's it feels a little bit like you can't entirely be sure that the timings aren't as well known or understood. I feel like Magical should know them by now, or would probably know them by now. But I honestly, I honestly don't know. They've been practicing for a bit. Yeah, I also think a lot of games happened on one v one in the past few weeks. Not yes. as much, not as much in two v two. Players have been enjoying our new map, our new one v one maps, Canyon and uh, Frontiers. Well, Frontiers that have been remade. The as updated a Frontiers, map. exactly. New Frontiers, new Frontiers. Yeah. Always a new Frontiers to explore. Used to be Space New Front, the final Frontier, but here no, we have a new Frontiers. That's the final one. As as far as we know, we might get another one eventually. Another new Frontiers. Actually, that's something I, I like with map development. Sometimes you just have a map, you update it, you just put new in, on, in front of it. It's like, yeah, that's a perfectly new map. No one will mistake it. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. But that is a that is a pattern. Or certainly was, anyway. <laughs> yeah. New, Neo, Sheen, like all this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see what the map makers. Initially, it will be all Sunspear making maps, but in the Kickstarter, we saw they're planning on making a map editor so anyone can make their own map and get that uh, community input on competitive maps and maybe some other type of maps we'll see how that turns out once we get there <laughs> of course for now I, we're still yeah hmm? i'm excited for that i i don't know how much time i'll have to do it but i loved map making oh really like when i was younger oh yeah i was like honestly if i could just do a thing and it's just like money's no object just do whatever when it comes to game development i would mm. i would love to do just level design oh that's fun yeah. Yes. Especially for RTS, well, for strategy games like this, like the map design mm -hmm. can change so much of how they interact with each other, how the bases are placed, or what points to defend. And even then, Immortal said they're open to having new map elements, right? Either watchtowers yep. or I, other type of creep camps that, or anything you can think of. Because I can't really think of much right now. What's uh? Do you have any any fun map, uh, like map? I, I guess a gimmick. I call it kind of. I mean, there's a lot of obvious ones. You know, break like. Buildable bridges, breakable bridges, the watchtowers, warp gates, or way gates as a Warcraft 3 thing. Yeah, I, I guess like gates Mercenary camps of some kind. Yeah. Having, or some other way of just acquiring neutral units. Some right, kind of having, war element. Having neutral units in your, your army could be quite interesting. A little bit of a dimension there. I mean, that's there's a lot of room for how they're going to set that up as time goes on. Because, well, there's a lot of room for setting that up as time goes on. But for no. now, we have a game that is not built around these elements. It only has the one type of creep camp, because this map does not even have the ancient, the big ancient that gives you a bunch of pirate. That is not a Lost Province thing. That is only every other map. Only every other single map has it for now. Lost Province being yes. the first one. Try not to go for the ancient. Ooh, the 2v1 on those teapots. See, we get those exciting battles from the get-go, and Magical even gets to keep his teapot alive. Oh, he oh. does. Oh, wow. That's... Ooh. Okay, so scouting advantage for Team Ice. They will have no problems going around to their opponent's base. This is... I'm actually really excited. Like, having played around with it, it is quite fun to have to actually think about your scouts. Like, not just put them in and just wait around. It's like, oh, you actually have to 
you have to be moving around with them. You have to be mindful of them. You have to maybe push away your opponent's scouts. So you're not just constantly getting scouted. So you can do some sneaky things, which, as it stands, totally not what you're going for. A much different build this time. Going for early, early altar. So they're mm. going to want to try to get some early pyre. Probably, possibly want to get some early damage. We'll see what they go for next. Whether they're trying to go for a, ti a timing push or just get that early pyre. But well, that won't take long to find out. At the same time, Magical and Santa Claus will find out themselves, as these yeah, scouts are uncontested. Did the big element here is getting the double Ether on top of it, which means going for some type of attack. Even though he does expand, it's a quite a late expand who have a lot of Ether going for him. The opponents did not scout it, as you mentioned earlier, and they're heading for the most, well, the most economical build, right? Both going for very mm -hmm. fast expands. At this point, Sand and Magico need to, to pull something out if they want to defend this. this well, maybe not because it seems like a pretty yeah, late like, push. Is it defending it? Is it defending? Like, that's what I think. It looks like Voyeur is still playing for the mid game with Pyre. Because you do want to get early pyre for Mala. You want to get those. It makes it hard, easier for fights because Voyeur could then pop Red Harvest and push away their opponents, allowing them to push ground sooner. Though it did take a little while for them to go for this, and Santa's able to contest no problem. Yeah, Santa gets the gets on top of the pyre camp. Of course, totally not a Voyeur can get on top of the units. Both of them just waiting for opponents and Magical coming from his own bone stalkers. Depending on how fast this happens, might be able to get the camp himself and. We're keeping right, out, team fire, out of the way. Team fire up ahead. Much better situation for them than the last game. Yeah, all he sacrificed a or bit of economy. Or last attempt of the game. <laughs> yeah, sacrificed a bit of economy, getting his base that late compared to his opponents. So Ice does have a decent economical lead right now. Could be able to hit a bit of a stronger timing if they decide to go for it. And not a Voyeur behind it. Gets his Neurosite and starting the Zakal production. So not a Voyeur still kind of afraid of getting pushed in. The Meta has at least one v one revolved around Zakal versus Zephyr. Though Santa's not going for Zakals and Magical's not really going for Zephyr. Sorry, Santa's not going for Zephyrs and Magical's not going for Zakals, the units they could actually go for. It's a as we saw in the last game, pure pure basic unit up until you get tier three tech. Oh, that was Santa's play last time for sure. And he yes. might just be heading for it again. He likes his Antari. Oh, there it is. No, nope, no, nope. we are gonna see the current meta. We well, are going to see Zephyr right. versus Zakal. We might not, because this is not Oh, you're right, you're right. He just you're needs right. a monastery to get the next tech level. <laughs> That's right, you're right. Yeah. I'm silly. That's only Aru that worked that way. Yeah. Uh, like, just a new tech tree has been modified a little bit, me meaning that you have to get that tech structure, which is nice in some ways, right? That means Croft needs to get some type of uh, anti-air unit from the get-go, aren't uh, stuck. Oh, there's air and I have nothing to against anti-air. That would be a bit hard sometimes. This Not a deal for Team Fire, though. It's It really is just Santa Claus that's possibly in trouble, and Magical, Magical's got nothing but anti here. Yeah, that's it. the way it all works, right? Getting all those Bone Stalkers. Not heading for the Zakals. A lot of Zakals coming in for Toilet Not of Warrior, though. Because those big frontliners can really just bulldoze their way in if they decide to. Well, that's I'm curious what Santa's going for. Because, again, they... They could deal with this directly, or they could just, as we saw last game, hold the line until they get in. And at the same time, Magical, able to push back Voyeur. There's high ground. There's the Red Harvest. Voyeur, the push in. I'll just burning Pyre from Team Fireside to try to get rid of Magical's early push or early army. And nothing is really contesting. Even this tower is not that much of a problem. Voyeur and Zo being a little careful. But every kill they get is a kill, is a bonus target they don't have to worry about later on. And on top of it, Zol does get her ability a bit pushed forward thanks to it. Stunning Zol, Zol there was smart from YJ's out, getting a bit of that uh, hunting's mark from the get go, making her Zol more powerful as the game goes on. You need to summon her quite a few times to get her, to get her more powerful, get the ultimate abilities up and running. Yeah, you do need to get kills to get great hunt. So. If you're used to seeing Zol just Zol players mess with their opponent's vision, that can take a while. Not because of this patch, it's actually a couple patches ago, but that is a thing to bear in mind. Zol does have to get some kills to mess with enemy vision. Match goes sending his teapot all the way into his opponent's base. Really a deep scout there, seeing absolutely everything from his opponent. But the bone first time they managed to do that too. Good for them. Yeah. 
Yeah, Bone Cappy was a bit hidden behind the Bash. I love that from YJ's out. Keeping his Bastion hidden, he's going to have a few Frums coming in hot and heavy without being seen. And that's the way you want to do it. You don't want the Frums to be revealed. You want them to go into your opponent's aloe line, kill a few workers, and then have them react to it. Well, as with last game, the... Oh, whoa! YJ's out going for the corner expansion very quickly. Has been... But has it been spotted? I'm not sure if it's been spotted. Santa's definitely got the tower in the place they would need to mess with it, but... Same time, something out of position drops the Empire Unbroken, and that's not going to be something her Zo can actually push into. So, wisely retreating. Voyeur and Zo want to figure out where Team Ice has set up. Gets. Alright, so yeah. Zo's at least not going to lose too much with that. Yeah, the little secret base not doing much. Both their... Well, it worked last Both time, the... but. Mm. Yeah. All of Team Walter this time has their third base on the Nod of Warrior, getting it slowly on his side, but not quite yet. And Nod of Warrior just poking around the map, trying to figure out where he can do some damage. Magical sees immediately with his Bone Stalkers heading all over the place. And he's and going again? for the Acolytes again. <laughs> yeah. Seven minute Akalic. I mean, tech is slower. Certainly, we're not getting Behemoths right away. But it's. Yeah. I mean, Akalic. Akalix aren't that much blocked, right? They haven't been slowed down in their production. It's still only the Blood Veil that you need, so... Yep. They're the ones that have been slowed up as much, quite like the... Like you mentioned, the Behemoths have been very much slowed down. Well, some of it is also the time it takes to build them. That that has gone up, too. Like, the upgrade structures? Mm, the time right. it takes to get tech structures has gone up, too. Yeah, it's definitely a big factor in, in how slow it is to get that, them up there. And Santa expanding the north, so not taking just the west side of that. This time taking the north oh. the tower to protect Oh yeah, himself. magical at 9 o'clock as well. This is... This is fourth base. This... The economic lead coming in here, which... Again, not as well contested. Zao does have their fourth. Voyeur does not. And Voyeur's been playing this entire game trying to go for more aggression, like early units, early attacks. They haven't actually turned that into... real damage. Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting all that early ether. Often you do that when you, you're you heading for a time push. Uh, because or else you're just slowing down a bit your economy, slowing down your, your natural, and slowing down how many units you can get quite as fast. Just because ether buildup, although it always helps and always keeps going, at this point he's floating about 400, which you don't necessarily want, of course. He can use that to, to get a few more tech units. And tech units are plenty powerful in the Croft or in, the, in Mala's army. I'm actually curious what they are building for tech. Like, do they have a deep nest at all? No, no. they got. Uh, they are going for enough bone canopies that I will expect. I'm not going to be surprised if we get Behemoth soon, but it could be anything. They have to survive this push, though. Magical still do. pushing. But Magical's really going for a slow push at this point. He's heading for a Colix, going fast and forward, getting his static defense up, so always something to head back to to defend. And, and stop his opponent to really jumping on top of him, especially with Kallax, that's very important as... Oh, and Kallax don't want to be jumped on. They're very slow. If they get... Yeah, they're... Like, Magicals... That's not Magicals army here. They're relying on Santa Claus to screen for them. And Santa Claus goes for it, pushing in, gets him in the middle of the hunting grounds, does not care. Lo oh, Magical locking down many a bunch of those units while Voyeur trying to go for the flank, unable to get much damage. Santa... Santa Magical have the center under their control. And on top of it, all of the ether that Santa was saving by getting only his entire gets up and goes all the way to Charles, gets the ultimate unit in the Croft Arby. And uh, some Angel Fire is about to fall oh. down to their opponent. They, oh, firing first one gets... Do Zao dodges it. But Voyeur still out of position. Santa Magical should have a clean shot at this third base. And Blood Blade's coming through from Zao, making Santa Claus's army a little bit easier to get through. Rain of Blood from Voyeur! Going for the surround, trying to lock out Santa Zentari. Santa is able to regroup. Oh man, With those Akalic hits. Akalic! Akalic hits from... Oh man, Magical's doing a significant amount of damage. Santa... Santa's still retreating. Trying to get back to the defensive position. Voyeur wiping out all of those Zentari. Magical's army is not going to last much longer either. Oh man, so, they're, they're pushing through. Yeah, the... Empire and Broken desperately trying to save these defenses. But the units are simply not there. Voyeur, Voyeur coming in from the back has a significant lead in the army here. All these tech units for Magical simply do not have any cover. But, oh, but the Sharu comes through, cleans it up. Sharu and Akalix 
are enough damage, turning everything back around. Walter team putting themselves oh, back man. in the game thanks to those Akalix just surviving. Man, sometimes it's just a small re extension, right? Team Fire were in such a good position, killing so many units, having their opponents only with tech units. But the end, the tech units held on, especially with an Empire and Broken that was just so powerful on that defensive position. And yeah, Team Ice lost all your units, but the reinforce were enough to come in for the for the kill on all of their opponent's units. Man, you can't really you can't really underestimate those omnivores. Yeah, no, get, getting them on top of the hill. Magical playing the complete defensive game, making sure he has everything to defend. And Turbone's coming through for the next push, getting their units to reinforcements. Is is there a push? I mean, Voyeur is going... Where are the reinforcements? Voyeur and Zoe both, actually, the reinforcements, but... It's... Like, are they going to want to go for this? It, this entire... I mean, now we're seeing Voyeur's... Voyeur and Zoe, like, this started out with them split up because Voyeur is trying to just take out this expansion over to the north. Oh, that might be dangerous, though. Yeah, As that Voyeur's push? gone... Yeah, I know this push is uh Zol comes out, but Zol's not enough as Zol from the opponent also comes in. All those Akalix at the back, yeah, dishing heavy damage. Their shots don't hit, but it doesn't matter. He forces his opponent out of position. That's the idea. Still, Voyeur does get the base. The magical is like between the behemoths and the fact that they don't have a lot of frontline units, magical is not confident to push in too much, giving Voyeur room to maneuver. And that room to maneuver is, like, is at least allowing the economy to be less lopsided. Still, magical with those defenses. We saw already how, how strong Zag defenses can be trying to run into those. Eesh. Yeah, these nuts team problem right now is that their opponent just out macroing them, getting all the base in the west and east side. And man, those Akalix shots, they're hitting. Oh, everything coming together. Akalix, the Akalix, the root, the... Everything. It's... All, every single ability the Insult could throw at them is just death for Deeds Nuts. Now Santa is regrouped. Magical Santa ready for a push. The... Is it, why does Zao... Is there Ally only going to survive this? Because... Nah, two more Kalic shots will take it out. Now it's just a matter of whether Voyeur can come through. Zao being oh, careful man. here, but losing so much Even health on the main strikes. army. Ostrich coming through. Another Ostrich wiping out half of Voyeur's army. Magical and Santa combined there, taking huge chunks out of their opponent. Another Ostrich right at the back. Voyeur going for the assault, but simply doesn't have the army to hold this. Magical continuing to pressure on that with the Blood Plagues. And then it's... It's going crazy. Like, yeah, Blood Plague Kala combo is surprisingly powerful. Yeah, and oh man, the Arox trying to come in and deal some damage, but just not enough. Fire are just down and out at this point. They're, the reinforcers are coming slowly but surely, but it's really slowly. It's a slow crawl of units as the frozen. Yeah, slowly come is in. the operative yeah. word here. Yeah. Thrones just are in. The rest of the army is in position. Santa. Santa going heavily on air tech. So this is the one thing is that they are relying. He they are relying on having tech. They're not relying much on frontline units, but it doesn't really matter because Team Fire just doesn't have the army. Or at least yeah, did. Just, at this point, it's just numbers, right? The numbers game is too strong. You don't need frontliners when you have oh! a thousand anything. Oh, man. Yeah, you don't need frontliners when your colleagues wipe out your opponent's frontliners for you. Santa's <laughs> just picking everything off, splitting up Voyeur and Zo. Voyeur driving the Red Harvest, but it's simply not that significant at this stage in the game. Magical. Adding all, like, a significant chunk of White Desire's army out of the way. Down with that, another Blood Plague tearing apart Team Fire's army as they try to approach Santa. It's continuing with the throne pressure off the swords. Wiping out the last bits of Zhao's army. Voyeur is cleaned out. Zhao is cleaned out. This is a wide open field and... Deets Nuts knows it. Walter Team takes the game for game one. Oof. Yeah, what a game. Great macro trip from Team Ice the whole time. Walter Team really taking... I mean, last game they just went for west side. This time they went west and north and just took care to embox their team in a, just a small little square. They yep. tried to survive, but at that point yep. you just have no happy economy <laughs> to compete. 
Yeah, that almost worked, though. I mean, they, the idea that you know, setting up the base on the side, Zhao had good plans for expansion, but Voyeur wasn't quite there as much, while Team Ice consistently setting up that army, or setting up the expansion, they could easily get the tech. And from that point on, it was, it was kind of that. Yeah, Magical really had fun putting up his static defense, right? Just setting it slowly but surely forward. Always getting a few of those... Uh... Of those, of those omnivores up and at it, ready to eat anything that's in their path. Mm. Well, one day omnivores will be able to teleport, and that will be even more obnoxious. <laughs> that's right. Not, like, off the bat, but there is, is going to be an upgrade. Is that an upgrade, or it'll need the god heart to, be, to have been upgraded? Something. Something that will allow teleportation. It's going to be yeah, a fun so time for some of us. That'll, that'll be... That'll be... <laughs> Okay, I mean, you say that, it's like, I play Malo, though, so it actually would be a fun time for me. So. Mm -hmm, exactly, he'll be one of the people that have fun with it, and then other people are like, oh, you know, I just... I I'm just gonna bring my units and die to omnivores that appear in my base somehow, because you placed that you got some root way there, and it's like, you can just teleport now. Yeah. It's like, oh, gosh darn. Actually, that That's would be hard for Malo. That's a Zol thing, but Malo doesn't have as easy as easy a time making root way, because Zol can just Eight. drop an underspine, and there you go. Yeah, well, you got Malo doesn't wells. have underspines. You got blood yeah, wells, but blood wells take a while to set up. Honestly, we haven't seen much blood wells in a while, so maybe it's something that will be retouched. We're still very early in the game, so there were a few. There were a few that game. Blood wells? I thought it was on yeah, the other side. No, no, there are plenty of blood wells being built out around the okay. defenses as well. I don't know if they were. No, they're magical, so they weren't Mala blood wells. They didn't give you pyre, mm. but they're still a thing. Okay, yeah. Well, that's true. They do give up the mana. They bring up the blood or mana of the unit, so that he's able to get mm. those ecologs just a bit faster. Because who doesn't want more ecologs? Magical, generally, um, actually. Yeah, well, no, they, they all want all the ecologs. Yeah. It's entire game plan is ecologs. Yeah, ecologs with enough static defense that he can just keep using them. That was his game plan. <laughs> <laughs> just about. Anyhow, we are getting a significant shift in the immortal choices. San and Magical basically swapping who they play, while Voyeur and Zhao just changing faction entirely. I'm curious if this is just a faction of the map, right? This map mm. has has the biggest rush distance, really easy to just get on top of it. But at the same time, uh, you have a pretty defensive uh, position on top of the hill. Oh, catching their opponent's teapot as it tries to go up the hill. Yeah, this time, this time these nuts knows what's up. They're not going to lose the teapot battle. Yeah. Sorry, right? To... right? Hang yeah. on, I apologize. There's a... Is there any way of dealing with that? No, there is not. I'm sorry. Nope. Okay, I apologize for both that and the fact that the grass is flashing. Flashing? You know, that's just lightning. Uh, that's just lightning on this planet. Fool's Bay is known for its lightning that does uh, weird stuff to the grass especially. And, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and only the grass. Oh, only the grass, yeah. All the Sorry, rest of the land like, is I, lightning normally, protected. Yeah. Normally would not want to <laughs> focus on that. It's just from the perspective of, I don't know if this is a risk for people who have epilepsy. So if you have a history of epilepsy or epileptic seizures, like, just keep you keep an eye on yourself, just in case something this causes a problem. I don't think it will, but I just don't want to risk it. Oh, wow, I always want to point hill. that out. Yeah, that's a good point. It's uh, always got to be careful. Are they going to win another teapot battle? Oh, this is looking so good for these nuts. They're winning the teapot battles. Okay, we're winning the teapot battles. <laughs> so close. Oh, they got... No, they are winning the teapot battles. More importantly, yeah. all they revealed was one expansion. They didn't reveal whether or not both Zhao and Voyeur are expanding. They didn't reveal anything else to do with their tech choices, their army choices. It, it's just, they have some early Sapari to have some defense. Like, nothing's really been given away. Although, they haven't really spotted much either. The thing with Deets Nuts is their entire scouting game plan has been defensive. They have no idea at all what Walter team is up to. Yeah. Hmm. Well, at this time, getting for the early Zephyrs, as we mentioned, Zephyrs are pretty powerful in this patch. They're able to get them up and running and deal a lot of damage to everything. And maybe that's a better idea than last game, being able to get on top of your opponents, getting some damage done. So I'm heading for the fire camps, our team Walter heading for the ones on the north side. With the tower protecting them for those early, early pyres. Oh. Is Santa gonna... Okay, so I'm really curious if Santa's gonna go for here as far as pyre stuff because... Oh, sorry, Santa. With... Actually, yes, Santa. I do mean Santa because that is... Now, a lot of early pyre attacks. If they go for their opponent's pyre camp in the bottom right corner, I am going to be excited. 
because it's going to mean they're going to be going hard trying to get like an early hunting grounds push. Oh, yeah, the early hunting grounds. It, it could come in pretty early, right? Yeah. Oh, very early. And they are going for it. It's going to yeah, be sure. a fight, but it's yeah, a fight they're going to uh, is going to win. Yeah, there's not enough reinforcement. Voyer can do a bit of damage, but not enough. He might be able to kill a few units, but it's not really worth it at this point. First Zephyr comes out. Much this is yeah, first Zephyr. Not not of this set, or of this game, rather, of this entire tournament. Or no. show match. <laughs> like this is first time we've seen Zephyr. This patch. Mm. And Zephyr have been have been buffed a tiny bit, able to attack to do more damage with every shot, which you know is a significant buff considering how many Zephyrs you get on the map generally. Mm -hmm. And with Salshin's here as well. Salshin also Billy a oh, bit reworked. That's right. Oh, they're cool now. Yeah, they get they're cool healing. now because McCall ground. Oh, yeah, ground, McCall ground. That's so like I I know it sounds like a little bit, but the fact that the fact that Voyeur can just basically make the Zapari have the big shields at any time, or the or make the Zephyrs have much sh have much shorter wind step cooldowns just in the field with a Jari, because normally that's the thing you can only do with the Wars and with Magi, but it's, I know what you can do with the Jari now. Yeah, getting those is a nice buff. Also, he like <laughs> yeah, getting those bug get get those monks up and at it and able to uh, teleport as much as they want. Well, at least a bit more than before. Yeah, twice as much as before. Yeah. <laughs> okay, a small push from Magical, getting his Magi in position. Zo wants to snipe them as he should, but needs to be careful. Loses his ever an expensive loss in this early stages. Well, again, Magical and Santa. They've been... Well, Magical's clearly just building up towers. Like, they they are burning all that pyre into towers. Santa's just holding on to it. They've very quickly decided to go for tech. Like, they just rushed for Red Seers. Probably Red Seer Akalic. Yeah, he said, oh, Magical, I saw you do Akalic. I want to do it, too. And that's okay. what he's heading for. No, that's the plan. Heading to defend their tower, but might be a bit too late. Mm -hmm. Are they going to cut him off? Oh, no, they're going for the cutoff. But Surround coming in from Zhao. Warrior with Heaven's Aegis, but it's not going to be enough to keep Magical and Santa Claus locked in. Magical, Santa with their tower. The tower support, it's going to be enough to keep Team Fire... Okay, it should be enough to keep Team Fire from attacking. Whether or not they do is up to them. <laughs> it was enough this time. This time was enough, plus the reinforcements coming in. And... Oh, wow, a tower at the back is something we don't see quite as often. Both or zoom, it just makes sense, right? You get the extra tower, get yeah. the extra power regeneration. And plus, you always like a bit more vision. Oh, pointing out the expansion. You don't have a lot of other ways. You do not have the opportunity to just run by with cheap units and get out of dodge. Oh, yeah. yeah, the cheapest unit is 100, 100 alloy, which <laughs> it's not something you can just give up that easily. No, not when you don't have any escape options. And there it is, a colic coming from Santa Claus. Six minute colics. That's what we want. That's what we want to see. More colics. And one day we'll have transports, and then we'll have uh, reaver drops. There we go. Oh, that's right. Yeah, then the colics will actually be good. <laughs> <laughs> Which I know sounds weird because we're seeing a colics launch today, but the colics were very undervalued for a while. And even now, I think it's largely because 2v2 allows the other player to cover. Yep, that, that, that's mostly. And another tower goes down. Are losing all their towers, all their map, which <gasps> comes with it. And the account oh. shots are so powerful. It's coming in there. <sighs> Trying to go wide as that's dirt. Okay, why does that at least doing a solid job dodging? They took damage, didn't take a lot of casualties. But they did lose tower, and now there's almost no map control outside of their base for Team Fire. Yeah, they're heading for their third bases, which is important. You need a bit of action. Uh, but Magical can't be ready to just jump on top of it. Magical being ever so aggressive with his unit composition. It, yeah, it's comp composition that's very easy to move around and just maneuver everywhere you want to find the best spot to kill your opponent. And that just makes it that much harder to set up map control. I mean, how exactly are Zhao and Voyeur going to be able to get their pyre going when their opponent's at full map control? Zhao has towers, but not very many. But is going to jump in, jumps in the Acolix. One goes down, second one goes down afterwards. They are fighting back. But there's not a whole lot of support units, though Zhao is sacrificing almost all their efforts to try to take this. Simply is enough. The last Akalic is able to get away, and Voyeur and Zhao, their army is simply insufficient to contest this. 
And that was a that was a sacrifice to all the Zephyrs trying to jump on top of it. He got free of them as you said, and Rossi wouldn't have gone in any. It's not worth sacrificing all your Zephyrs like that. No. Zoo in such a bad position. Especially especially going off to the side afterwards to try to deal with everything. It's like it just didn't it did not pan out simply because they did not have the right position. Like they tried to move off, take out the Red Seers. It's like no 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 no. You have to get rid of the rest of the Ecolics. But you can't easily see them. Like they don't have any detectors. So if the Akalix far enough away, you don't know how many there are. And yeah, Zoe does not know how many Santa Claus has. Yeah, to know that it's not uh, true stealth. So as soon as you get in range of them, you'll be able to see them. So that's what Zoe was going for. At least he jumps on top, can see them, can try and kill them, or else he sees big lasers appearing towards him like we do right now. <laughs> yeah, which is not the most, which is surprisingly unhelpful. Going in once again, but now the support unit's in play. Magical with their own Zephyrs, and Zhao simply cannot attack into this. Oh man, I'm about to lose another army. He might be able to wind step his no, way out. Uh, can they? Up the cliff, maybe. Wind uh, still on cooldown, though. Because they burned it there to get go. onto the Acolyx. Okay, the first one. There we go. Okay, that's some, that's some really fun micro. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh, Voyeur. They're doing a great job of the micro, but you know, you met, just miss it one time and that is that is you dead. Yeah, Speaking and, of. Yeah, that's why we see the, the value of the slaughters, you know? If units don't move, they uh, they die. Oh! Oh, wait! Yeah, the Sentinels! Sentinels! Right! Sentinels got the projectile shield! Oh, that's beautiful. I forgot about that! Yes, I was like, huh? Why, isn't, why aren't those shots hitting? That's another, that's, uh, that's another new thing we haven't really seen since the last tournament. But yes, Sentinels are finally complete. They can finally <laughs> protect other units. I mean, it costs their own shields, but hey, it's it's there. It's yeah, well, working. It's keeping it's, all of Warrior's army safe behind this. It's working really well for those Akalic shots. Akalic shots deal massive amount of damage. All you have to cost is a bit of shields. Perfect use. And here comes, yeah, here comes the Ancient. There's no way that... Uh, Spark can come and contest that. But, you know, who needs Pyre, right? I mean, everyone. Yeah, but besides you know, everyone. <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? That's not an unfair question. Orzum, or like, Zhao has managed to get some Pyre around the backside, get enough towers. They are... They're actually... I want to have at least five or six towers for the amount of Pyre income they're popping in. It's a good start for him, right? It's a... they, they have Pillar on deck. I'm not sure Pillar's quite enough to deal with this. I, I'm not sure either. I, I feel like I feel like the right positioning could make it work, but it's gonna it's gonna have to be used at the right time. Like I think Zhao's gonna get one. Like, I think they get one chance this entire game to drop a pillar and make it count. But they might manage to. Oh, I mean, is everyone coming around the back? At least getting some red seers. It's more basic units for some tech. I don't know. Five five Zephyrs for a Red Seer, not worth it, but the Concepts, not bad in theory. You know, keep getting your opponent out of position, not in your face, and maybe you're able to push in. But no, there's more static defense again. Yep. Team's, team Walter heading for a lot of static defense all over the place. They have howlers, right. though. They have ways of dealing with them. Or at least Ooh, yes. Zhao, Zhao has ways of dealing with it. Oh, yeah. Howlers are very, very a great composition here. Of course, their opponents are teching up to the final stack structures. And we'll see how it pans out, at least. How was dishing so much damage from the back with all oh, the no, all strikes, all strikes, blood plagues, fight team fire struggling to push in there as the army is being weakened to heavily magical and San magical in particular, just wiping everything out. More all strikes coming through, and team fire doesn't have a position to work from. Zhao the Howler is at least able to deal some damage despite losing the front lines, but Voyeur was the front lines, and they've got they can't help anymore. Oh god. I was gonna say the howlers still survived and then three of them just got destroyed by one by one big shot from those uh yeah. yeah. Yep. And on top of this, seventy five percent of the map is under the control of Walter team. <laughs> it's Yeah, it's it's going real well for them. It's really going well for them. Well that's a Gotta bit say. cheeky. That's a bit cheeky for ma for magical. That's not your base magical, you're not supposed to take that. Oh, it's Magical's base now. Oh, never mind. No, oh, Boyer tried. actually was able to contest. Uh, I'm sure Magical will try again. He, he's lacking yeah. economy, right? He, he needs to get more bases. Oh, yeah, time. no. Ma Magical's struggling. Mm -hmm. Magical's really struggling. 
It's one of those issues, right? Sometimes we're at the end of the month, and I mean, like they like, only you know have four Sharu. Like, come on, no, that's they're clearly they're clearly in dire straits. Yeah, exactly right. It's like I only have five PS fives. Eh, nah, you should you should get an extra base, <laughs> an extra job, just so you can get another PS five. Yeah, was those... there a five PS five skit? I don't think there was. I mean. Look at that. Yeah, those so are PS3s. PS3s right? and 4s PS4s, but I don't think those are five PS5s, because I think that came through COVID and Lonely and Rose and doing it. Sorry, I'm oh, okay, I'm yeah. getting yeah, way off in the weeds about a very about a very niche <laughs> West Coast Canadian comedy group. <laughs> and <laughs> Yeah. And people are like, wait, what's Canada? Wait, no, wait. <laughs> Just look at four PS4s, okay? That's all I'm saying. Okay. Oh, we're just standing there. As the units try to, to get into it, unfortunately, all we have to talk about is comedy groups because, well, they're, it's a bit of a comedy of errors at this point. Yeah. They have no way to get in. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a cruel joke for Deets Nuts. Mm. Like, they are locked inside on the high ground with no real way of breaking through these defenses. I mean, they have the Hallowers, but anytime they poke that out, well, they get counter Hallowered. Not to mention the Akalux and... Wait, yeah, why are Voyeurs... This entire time, Voyeurs just had all these Absolvers here, which... Okay, to be fair, I'm not sure what else they could do. Yeah, this is a... It's just not a laughing position right now. They're trying no. to push forward. Hallowers are decent at dislodging, getting those static defense down. Uh, Hatch goes down for the... Well, that's a uh, off strike uh, for those four modes. Or maybe Angels. Well, well, I mean, they're they're dead now. Yeah, they're, they're, they're in a better place. So we got to talk about now as the fight happens. Ooh, and as is most of the army here, magical dropping a pillar, and Deets nuts getting ripped apart left and right just by these Galics. I uh, just army's couple completely in half. Voyeur had max supply and or max population, and they are now at like a quarter of what they started with. And when you're pushing More. forward with uh, with Sharos, you know you have a lot of money. When the, your main <laughs> army is just Sharos, it's like, yeah, no, you uh, you you understand how the economy works. You uh, you invested well in all those NFTs before they went down, and yeah, that's uh, he he's going for it. He he got all his fortune ready. Wait, so Sharo or Ponzi scheme? Oh, definitely. Look at uh, them. They're, right. they're, yeah, you you think they're valuable, but at the end of the day, it's like, is it really worth it to get that many? Actually, that's a good question, because <laughs> while Magic's getting a lot of awe strikes, it's really just coming down to so much anti-air support, especially from the static defense that's keeping them alive. Because like, a few Castigators in the right spot, those Sharu are dead, and it's so much more worth it for the Castigators than the Sharu. I'd say that's just how it works. The technology behind it is what's really powerful, and what's keeping them in those, uh, th that, te that technical The technology of having an act of souls just pulled together yep. into a big singularity. Yeah, keeping that technical support at the back and... Uh... A lot of all strikes in one spot. I'm oh, really look not at sure that. why those resolvers were there, though, to be honest. I guess it just made it that much harder to push in and take that rock. Especially the Sentinel made it that the slaughters weren't working on them. Well, when the Sentinels were there, yeah, but they got moved around. I, I, I really want to see more Sentinel defensive usage because against the Akalix, it was working very well. Oh, yeah, and I can see slow push, slow push with Sentinel support, like stabilize Sentinels could do a lot of good to push past, like, static defense play. Because it just cuts off the projectiles. And that's like, all static defense is. So if you do that, yes, it's a bit hard. It's part of the Sentinels, but it's a lot of value. But that being said, here's what I was talking about with the Ponzi scheme of Sharu. The Castigators are able to get in. Magical doesn't have a whole lot to work with. But it's too little too late as Walter Team takes game two. And now is poised to take this entire set in a show match. Yeah, we're heading to Embargo for a third map at the very least, so we're going to see all three maps in the first three games, so this, that's a fun little, uh, little thing we can do with show matches. We don't have to care about fairness, we're just going to show up all the maps. And really, it's fair because they can pick whatever immortal they want, whichever they think is yeah. favored on a certain map. I mean, they can do that anyway. Like, that's that's how the game works. You're not locked into a single immortal. No. <laughs> Most players can play in fact, in everyone. fact, it's generally encouraged, it, especially... Once the once more immortals come in, it'll generally be encouraged to have like three ish, three to five immortals at your. I'd say three. I'm gonna say three. So yeah, yeah, within the same faction or not. Ooh, it's actually yeah. gonna be quite fun having all those factions and also faction families. Meaning you can change from Irotech to R or both both human factions pretty easily just because they have a lot of the same base mechanics. Hmm. 
stuff like that's going to make it a bit easier to switch switch it up between factions, seeing different gameplay patterns. That's the idea. Yeah, you have you have multiple immortals. You have multiple. Yeah, I should say you don't just have multiple factions, just multiple immortals. But the immortals are planned to have three, or each faction is planned to have three immortals each. So it's not going to be impossible. It's just going to be that you have to either play all the immortals of a faction, which, as you can see already, they're very different, or just yeah. have three immortals across factions, which are l there's differences between factions, but they're not insurmountable. What's interesting is really the play style patterns you can see from, right? You can mm -hmm. see Origins yes. is all about defensive play, whereas Adari is more about keeping the units alive and being able to maneuver a bit more easily than other units. Uh, so we'll see how the players decide. Maybe you're just going to go for Decker and Ajara because they're both people that can just move around very easily with uh, uh, with teleportation abilities. So we'll see how they go for it. Santa, we're getting started right now. Xone Orzum yeah. for Team Walter, Mala Orzum for Team uh, for Team Deets Nuts. Okay. Uh, it, I uh, there, hmm. there was a crash. It seems from totally not avoidable. Ah, so we're going to restart okay. into it. Unfortunately, uh, sometimes it happens. Yeah, time time. that's a thing. But we'll it'll be fine. Life will go on. Yeah, we'll head back into Fool's Bay as soon as Not of Warrior stops. Uh, oh, his uh, his full computer from crashing. Really. Yeah. Gonna blame him because we can't. He's the hero we deserve. Stops the impact. Stops the slaughter. I don't know. Yeah. Crashing is dangerous. Don't crash. Don't crash ever. Yeah. Let the market crash and. And other stuff, but uh, yourself, no. Don't don't let yourself crash. Yeah. Keep drinking water. Keep getting down at that exercise. And drive defensively. Oh yeah, that's a, that that is the term. That's know. that's why I'm saying like that's what I mean by crashing. Like don't don't get drive in a car crash. Yeah, drive defensively. Yeah. Yeah. And play defensively I mean, or offensively. Playing a game is different. You can well, do whatever both, you want. Yeah, you had two ors in that game. So I think play defensively is going to be what's is going to be the way of the next match. That's quite curious because on this map, there's really two paths of attack. Mm -hmm. Sounds oh, well, that doesn't mean each path of attack is that much smaller, so maybe it's easier to defend, but at the same time, you can attack from multiple ways, so if, yeah. uh, we'll see how they decide to defend Battle for Zoom. I guess if you can, exactly if you break out a path, that means there's only one other path to, to really concentrate on for the moves and the attacks. That's true. Uh, I like this map. I like having Places to attack all over the place. I, I know I really liked this map when it first came out, but I, I slowly grew to find myself liking Embargo a bit more. Mm. But I did really appreciate, like you said, there's a lot of routes around to get through to places. I wonder if I it's think it works really well as a two v two map, though. I think as a two v two map, this work is this this map is great. Yeah, it's gonna be one of those maps where like you know it's great. It might be great to watch. Sometimes it's not as fun to play because you just have to be all over the place. But to watch, it's great. Just seeing the randomness going to happen. And, oh, Ice Gang in the teapot battle for, for get-go. They've got... Oh, if they get this, they've... Because are we going to see shenanigans? Oh, we Voyer always want going to see Well, maybe. We're getting the early altar from Voyer. Early altar, double double ether. So Sand and Magical, no. they got to be mindful of potential tech pushes. This is what he went for last time. Uh, but depends. Will he expand or will he get a second altar? That's the big tell on what type of push he's going for. Is he just getting that up and early to be able to get his, get his tech up a bit faster? Or is he really heading for a big timing push? Well, the the pattern so far has just been tech up faster. Yep. Yeah, there's the expansion. So he's not going oh, okay. for a big timing push. Uh, which honestly, Santa and uh, Magical went for the two bases, but only one to defend at the front, and one's pretty well defend at the back of the base, so no need to worry there. So, now I'm wondering, like, is... Is this going to be the same thing? Like, go Akali stuff? I mean, granted, for Walter there's no reason not to. It's just, what is Deeds Nuts... What are their responses? Because... Oh, again, wow. they have Sentinels on the deck if they want to. What? Sheesh! Yeah, no, Magical, okay. Magical playing the meta, figuring out his own meta, right? Just saying, you know what? I'm Apparently. just going to take camps with static defense. Why not? He has the economy for it. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> he doesn't have any... Yeah, he doesn't have any... Uh, no, they don't. They're relying entirely on static defense, which is a bit of an opening, but they're they're also relying on Voyeur and Zhao being too afraid to attack. 
to actually go for it. Yeah, because really that is the big counter to this, right? You just attack. Oh yeah, there's nothing defending it. it. Like, there's, oh, it's two v one. If you go yeah. for it, if that yeah. Santa doesn't even have an army yet. Yeah. I mean, static defense. It, the thing about static defense is that it's static. It doesn't move, especially when it doesn't have the teleport. It got a very early, early power thing. count. Oh really? They're, he's gonna get the teapots in to try and get that pyre. Ah, oh, they got it. Magical with the did. pyre steel. Of course he does. Yep. He gets both pyro cans from both sides. Ah, magical. Turning out the four teapot strategies. The four pot. That's what we want. Well, Zhao is going to spot... Hey, static defense. What does that mean? Not sure they realize that it means the main base is completely vulnerable. Yeah. Like, we're, we're three minutes into the game, and neither Santa nor Magical have built a single military unit. Oh, no. There's a few Centauri, right? No, there's not? Okay. They have nothing... No supply, no population use, no army value, nothing. They have some tech built up, but that's about it. Yeah. Mm. Pure static <laughs> defense. So, so Walter team is playing a tower defense game right now, mm. and Deets Nuts doesn't realize that. If I have some units are, are gonna are gonna appear, uh, but it might be a little bit too late. Uh, it's not a board. Santa's got a couple Centauri on the way, but that's about it. Well, at least the this proxy is Centauri on top of that. Yeah, at least it's been detected, right? But then there's Fire Singers, so you can't really attack into it that easily. Fire nope. Singers are not weak. But at this point, it's kind of worth killing just to get rid of that. Honestly, Legion just Hall. go like go around the back and smack their base. Like, why are you going for the stack defense? Go where oh, your man. opponent isn't. They can't move the stack defense. Oh. Okay, he got one stack defense without losing a unit. That's really yeah, quite but good. The, the opportunity cost. Now their opponents know. Oh, yep. they have this army. We can just build around them. They just swung around the back. Like, that's from, like, send the scout around, see whether or not there's anything in the main base, and then swing around to deal with it when you see that there's nothing. Yeah, I definitely agree with like, you. Like, your opponent cannot attack you. You cannot be counterattacked right now if your team, if your deed's nuts. Yeah, well, once that warrior says, well, if my opponent's doing it, I'm going to do it too. So it's heading for his own omnivore camp on the east side. So hopefully we'll have the omnivore camp to defend. Hmm. Well, to be fair, it is being broken. Zao is doing a good job actually breaking it up. So credit where it's due. Even though Magical stole the pyre once again. <laughs> yeah, he never stops. Don't stop, no. can't stop. And Santa gets ooh his opponent's uh, double E for base. Well, it's a corner base. It's technically, it could go either way. I don't know, man. Look, it's pointing. It's pointing towards the red bases. I think it's theirs. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. It's yeah. a bit easy. It's theoretically easier for Team Fire to grab that one. Yeah, so stealing that earlier like that is that much smarter just because it's one of their base they want to take eventually and now they just can't well it's going to be partly mined out if we get to that phase of the game well, on the other side of the map Zao's at least managed to clear things up a little bit now again this is advantage voyeur and Zao. they have massive military lead and, and magical. magical's going hard to colic if either voyeur or Zao builds a detector scout like builds the upgraded sc flying scout they are going to be able to deal with the Kallax no problem. If they don't, they just, they're done. Yeah, they could just jump on them, but uh, not happening quite well, they, yet. If they don't know where they are, how can they jump on them? That's what they I mean. Just, you got you to gotta yeah. know where the Kallax actually are going to be. And I think uh, they're just going for a mass Sharu again from Santa. If he gets all that Eifer from the get-go, that's a lot of Eifer for those uh, for the Sharu. <laughs> that seems to be the plan. So I'm going for continuing this push. If they... I mean, you know, they're getting closer. It's actually being a bit of a threat. One more tower gone. Santa. Yeah, the tower defense game from uh, tower defense game from Team Walter is very strong. This game. It is slowing their opponents down significantly, and mm. that's that is worth it. <laughs> we'll get the tower slowly <laughs> but surely. Oh, Empire Lodges, Lodgers. Yep. Oh, Who Empire wins? Orzum or Orzum? Empire, Empire Broken versus the your turrets die your towers die at 20% health. Well, now we know. Now we know it yep. just died. <laughs> well, at the very least we can say Deep Fire has map control. They have complete map control. That's true! That's actually a significant improvement from the previous games for them. 
They have map control, but not the corner I base, mean, which is... They have, they have map control on the basis of their opponents have not been contesting map control at all. Like, they've been going yeah. entirely for tech. And building whatever like... static defense they need to bait their opponents into fighting the static defense. Like, the fact that... <laughs> yeah, the fact that Wajah Zhao never went around the back to just pass the static defense meant there was... There was just free build time for Walter team. Yeah. <sighs> Oh man, the Kalex at the back. Yep. Yeah. So nine Kalex to begin with. How many? And there's no more. Okay. Okay. I want to point out nothing shoots up except static defense. When nothing else shoots up, if they're out of range of static defense, nothing shoots air. Full well, team you of say ice. that. Yeah, but Santa's going for. Oh, Thrones oh, this time. Oh, that's true. Okay, ah, just Thrones do shoot boring. up. Thrones do shoot just up. Thrones. But Thrones like, is like eight minutes, nothing shoots up. It could have been Bone Candy oh. by now or something. I don't know. They might, they might just go in. They could actually. This is this might work. I mean, it's like the absolute best position for Team Ice. But yeah, here comes the Akalex, and they're jumping yeah. on top of it. You know, All right, can they get these turrets down fast enough? Or the Omnivores rather, get the Omnivores down fast enough. It there's a chance. Towers oh. down. Omnivores are slowly but surely falling. The oh, Akalex over have caught up, and nothing is there to spot them. Wiping out most of Zao's army. Voyager you just see the missiles up here. Not, yeah, that's the you. thing. You really, really need the detectors from the Bastion. Like, there is no getting around that when you have when you're up against Zol building so many Akalics. I just Magico sees the opportunity cost, expands behind it, says, Oh, well, I can just expand. I don't mind. Oh anymore. yeah. And really, that was the best angle for team for Walter team. Oh. Like, team Ice. Yeah, they, they wanted that. It's up a tiny choke with a bunch of towers. The other side would have been right on top of their Akalics. Would have slaughtered all the Akalics. No support, no defense whatsoever. So, unfortunately for Deets Nuts, they haven't really been able to scout. Again, flying scouts have worked really well right now. They haven't been able to scout very much, and so they haven't been able to see where their opponents are set up. Because, again, high static defense, you need to know where your opponents are set up so you can just not run into their static defense. Well, rounds were out. Throne Sports coming alive, keeping the spirits of Throne Sports. Even it's not the same players. Even though it's neither Hydra nor Mixu. The players are not the same. The spirit is there. That's what matters. <laughs> You're not wrong. This is <laughs> yeah, like, defense into Kelly. tech. I never like. I honestly never thought we would see defense into tech in this game. And although I'm like I'm questioning how effective it'll really be because again, Deets Nuts is running into the defense. I still think it's a really interesting idea to see that as an option. That's. I think it's kind of cool. Yes. Now the question: Did they see the base in the corner? And if they didn't, it's. They oh, no. clearly did not. No. Oh man. Looks, yeah, it so looks like no. Yeah. So Santa's just couldn't keep it alive. Oh, even gets the power camp from behind this. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, that's. Oh, oh and the Akalix. They're deployed. They're here. Empire Broken is. There. Gonna keep them doing too much damage. <laughs> I mean, so that was able to save their their base and able to start pushing. Okay, with this, we got pillar on deck. We got rain of blood on deck. So, De like, Deeds nuts has ultimates on deck. If this ancient goes to them, which, yeah, no no contest, it'll go to them. That's the thing, right? Right now, the advantage is the Akalix are slow. They're out of position. If they want to push the same position, they might actually be able to. Uh, or they could yeah, push with, where the army With is. both ultimates? Oh, never mind. Red Harvest coming in. Pillar does drop. That oh, is man. exactly the what they need. Oh, the, the sword's throwing swords. Everything. What shoots up here? Okay, Zephyrs, I guess, but not much else. Kalix able to turn to push back into the stack defense. And once again, Deets Nuts throwing their army into the meat grinder. At least this time their opponent's army was there, but no, throwing into the meat grinder, not even going around to the side. Trying to pull back. It is just... It is a slaughter. Much as Zao's entire army has been sent to the Sharus. Hey, exactly. All the souls getting harvested back into Sharus. And... Well, I think maybe four or five Akalix types, so five more on the way now. As you should be doing. Uh, Sharus mm. coming in, but Sharus... We're about to get thrown sported. Don't, yeah, they don't do a great job against their units. Or it's grounding, really, it's, unless it's you really the time for castigators, honestly. This is the you know good time to get set, set up the castigators and hope for the best. Maybe Aerox, honestly, wouldn't be 
wouldn't be unwelcome. Although Voyeur doesn't have the. Well, no, see, Voyeur's in the ether for that. No. See, I go for the for the Voyeur weight where you just make the most beautiful unit and just look at the spider crabs go. And don't really worry about the victory. The victory right now is in making incubators. It's the moral victory of setting up as many kittles as possible. Exactly. That's a moral victory that I can go for, and I agree with him. Can't say you're wrong. Mm -hmm. If you can't go for the real victory, go for the moral one. Or the immortal one. Won't happen either, though. No. That that would that would be the normal victory. Oh, that's how it works? Oh, look, he, so. canceled, he, he canceled the tower. That's pretty good. And we have Kittles. Had Kittles. Well, they, they cause distractions. Getting that. Okay, Cascade is Cascaders. finally getting in position, but at this point, is it? Okay. Drop. Oh, got the offering. Got the root. Got the offering. Voyeur is cutting off a bunch of Santa's forces. Taking on, Okay, got a lot of thrones, but lost all of their mass arms in the process, thanks again to the Akaliks. That uh, they have incubators are seen. still there. Incubators are still here. Incub okay, incubator, you're right. incubator is still here. There, there remains an incubator yeah. with the remaining third of Voyeur's army that survived the Akalic attacks. Well, that poor Cascader. <laughs> Oof. Poor guy. Oh, and the well, thrones continue into San into Zhao's main. God. <laughs> Sheesh. Okay. Wonder well, that's that. Uh huh. We know what tech he's going for, and we see this base still uncontested the whole time. A lot. Honestly, a lot I think this base is that's a lost cause. Like again, it's so many defenses, not worth it compared to hitting just about anywhere else in the map, or at least wasn't because at this point, at this point, Walter team is pretty set up defensively. There isn't a lot of ways to go around it. That time may have passed. Ooh, Rafe Bows. Oh, yeah, the best way to deal with the thrones is just spellcasters, if you can catch them. And, and we saw that did work. Voyeur had a great setup for that. Unfortunately, again, the Akaliks, which they hadn't, they weren't really aware they were there, but the Akaliks got the jump on them. The Santa's, or Magical's Akaliks got the jump on Voyeur's forces, and so they didn't manage to get a lot of damage done. This time around, there's actually a shot. Avoiding most of this. Okay, avoiding almost all of the swords. Get on the back. No Akaliks in position. Two thrones go down at the cost of very few masked hunters. More thrones up. The Akaliks have caught up. S Magical, with their support, Ooh, no is going to be able to keep Santa's thrones alive. Santa with dropping all of the swords. Voyeur. Voyeur lost every single masked hunter in that fight. Oh, solid start. Mass, but, oh. mass hunters are cheap, right? It's not too bad if it wasn't all yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. When you don't, when you have more bases hey, and map control, but that's not really a thing right now. It's, yeah. it's lacking. It's lacking just a little bit. Maybe you know if you just had a little five bit. more bases. Just, just a little bit, yeah. Maybe five more bases would be fine. Ah, uh, to even get the static defense to get the ancient. That's perfect. <laughs> uh, well, to be fair, I mean, Voyeur did manage to nail a lot of Santa's thrones. Um, that's true. So Santa only has eight thrones left with. Oh, not in production. What is okay. half the thrones they had before? Like that's they, they got they got Santa split off. They like no 12, 16 thrones would be almost unstoppable. So the fact that the position was found to take out several of them more efficiently, absolutely solid. Yeah, and now worker. rain of blood popping. Voyeur losing so many mass hunters off the top. Magical wiping them out the Acolix. Voyeur still able to close the gap. Thrones are down. The Acolix are threatened. Voyeur and Zhao. Rooting, getting some hits in, but has so little army left to actually deal with the Akaliks compared to the sheer number of Akaliks Magicals built up. Is that 20 Akaliks? What that's the number heck? You're good for. That's the number you want to go for. You want to go at least 20 Akaliks, <laughs> and that's how you kill your that's opponent. all of their population in Akaliks. There's six population each. Oh, that's just a lot of population. When he has 147, yeah, that's... Uh... Out of 160. Yeah, it's a, a decent amount more than uh you generally recommend but with that much static defense i guess it's fine i suppose that's yeah i mean static defense doesn't cost any population so it's i guess that's the logic overall this strategy is static d doesn't cost anything other than alloy so you just build as much as you want and i mean that's a fair goal that's a that's the fair assessment so okay. 
I don't know if this will be the meta for now. I feel like there's been some, like, forgetfulness of going around stat defense this whole game, and that mm. has... Yeah, the that has led to a significant, imp a significantly stronger showing from this stat defense approach than I would expect, than it should be on paper. Yeah, don't, don't attack where the stat defense is. Attack where it isn't, and... Can yeah, because it's not going to come around and attack your base from behind. It's it can't do any. It can't move. It's static. That's that's the point. For now, one day it'll move. That's true. Okay, fine. For one now. Day. For now. But we're playing the game dead. now, not in the future. We're playing the game as it is now. So Why would we as do it that? stands, static defense is static. Play in the future. It's always better. Okay, fine. I, I still haven't discovered time travel, but if you have, please let me know. Anyone in chat as well. We'll take time travel anytime. Now I can tell you from experience, playing in the future is a bad idea because it gives your it gives everyone else more time to react. Oh, that's how it works. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, thrones, thrones some wages out coming forward, but his tag defense is too strong. But he might get some McCollicks. Okay, Voyeur going once again. They can avoid damage. Oh, the masked hunters gotta get around, but got rooted out. The McCollicks simply are not get, showing any mercy. Voyeur losing the entire front line on the assault. Magical is able to just hold, like, Magical and Santa Claus have so much on the ground. They have a few Castigators, but, yeah, the ground army simply cannot contest this. But they've learned. They're going to the static defense that's gets countered by Dislodgers, which... Yeah, they, they, have, they, they can wipe out static defense without issue. This is not a problem. <laughs> I mean, Zao does have thrones coming through, and those can at least do some damage. Getting the flank, getting rid of a Castigator... Zal might actually have the answer here. I do think it's a little too late. Voyeur, with another wave of Mass Hunters, gets a bit of damage in the Hallowers, but it's simply not enough. Zal, however, does have the damage output. Finally able to wipe out Santa's Hallower army. The Acolix, their days are numbered, but then how much longer does these nuts have overall? And all those are doing, like you said, are doing the damage, but oh, the counter thrones and the Cascaders coming in. Mm. Yep. I mean, those rounds did the damage, right? They were the perfect counter. They it did. was just a numbers game at that point, and uh, numbers were not in their favor. Well, rebuilds from Voyeur and Zhao, but Magicals, Akalix, their Akalic army is still going strong. And they're floating a ton as well. This Akalic army goes down, reinforcements will be up immediately. Yeah, that's what we should be talking about right now. Why is it magical maxed out? Unbelievable magical. What bad macro? Not not spending his money. Okay, there, there they go. No, 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 no. They're, they're good. They're good. They, they heard you. Okay, there we go. He heard me. Yeah. Thank God. It was unbelievable. It's uh. It's... And this just is clean up. Santa and magical have map control. They have defenses literally everywhere. This is a tower defense game now. See, I like this from Zo. He's attacking where the opponent's not and. Might lose a throne, but he's killing a lot of static defense. Yeah, you know, this would have been a great idea 15 minutes ago. Mm. Well, I mean, he's still attacking static defense. He should just move the thrones directly into his opponent's base. I uh, mean, there's, he's... there's no clean path to that anymore. Well, they're still incubators, <laughs> that... so I'm happy. Uh, that's true. They're still incubators, still providing a bit of a distraction, sort of, kind of, maybe a little bit. Another rain of blood drops, but really no... There's not an army to, multi to force multiply with that rain of blood. What do you mean? There's a lot of Quiddle there. Well, we're a lot of Quiddle. <laughs> still That's few. what I mean. Still we're... few. Two, one. <laughs> They're still Aww. good. Yeah, I, I'm very proud of Magical here, keeping the Incubators as long, alive as long as possible. And there we go. The Incubators kept alive as long as possible, but it's only so long as Walter Team takes the show match 3-0 off the back of, well, some defense, silly yeah. play, honestly. Well, I think what we've revealed today is how powerful Ack looks it and how much they need a nerf. They need they to be able to buffed, hit their... They No, they didn't. <laughs> Magical has been complaining for a bit about how Ack looks are useless because their shots hit one out of three times or so. <laughs> so, so I that's why they have 20 of them. False. Yeah, I, I so think... when they hit one out of three times and you have 20 of them, that means you get seven guaranteed hits. Exactly. <laughs> I guess that's, I it's that, that seems to have been the idea. So I think Akalix do need a buff, and uh, thank you, Magical, for showing us that they're too powerful in the current meta, because this was definitely the current meta of the game. And yeah, looking forward to seeing that in 1v1. Definitely going to I, I can't say I was disappointed. 
I gotta say, like this, this was a very interesting. I, I mean, this is this is a very different game. So I, I am happy with yep. how things turned out. I, I'm glad to see that, even though a Colic Stack Defense meta is profoundly silly, the fact that it's something different was very interesting. But and I, I do think, work. I do think there's a clear weakness of avoid the stack <laughs> defense early game, but yeah, once you get into the late game, it is a little hard to get rid of. Mm. So good, good job there. You found something different that's maybe a little bit difficult to deal with. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of them. They, they figured it out. <laughs> Yeah, well, anyway, that is going to be it for us today. So, thank you for watching, and we will have Break the Game Weekly one next week as well. And according to the event schedule, it is going to be going on regularly weekly, so... It should be whatever, the event right? schedule only has next week listed, so do join next week. The event schedule... Well, we'll see what happens, because the event schedule only has next week, but do do join in next week. Discord link is in the chat. The Immortal Discord link is in the chat. So you can pop in there and say hi and play a game. And then next week's 1v1 tournament. So do join us for that, where we'll have more than two players. We'll have a bit of an actual proper tournament. But until then, thank you to the players who did join up, especially Not a Voyeur who popped in the last minute to be the fourth. Thank you to. Well, still thanks to Seamus for organizing it, and thank you ZK for handling spectating and co-commentary. Yeah, that was a fun time. Other than that, thank you all of you for watching, and have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.